In chapter 15, I talk about fencing. And in this training, I actually go into working at your land area and I talk about electric fencing and permanent fencing and some of the pros and cons. Please enjoy. Daniel O'Brien here. Welcome to the training about fencing. So, um, yeah, this particular training, I'm mainly just talking about, um, yeah, portable electric fences. And um, I've the particular slides in this training, I've grabbed from an, a number of different training webinars and that, but I've sort of put them together in order. So, um, so all I'm saying that for is you may have seen part of the training, like if you've attended a previous webinar or or such. So anyway, I'll get into it. And, and one of the first things I talk about, and you may have seen me talk about, is working at your land area. So I'm going to go through this training fairly quickly because I don't want to just talk for 50 minutes just to fluff it out. If I get through it all in five minutes um, and I've got the message across, I'd rather that than just uh, take up an hour of your time with fluff. So working at your land area. So I've got a, a square here. I'm pretending this is a perfect square, a 16 hectare farm. So 16 squares, um, each square representing one hectare. So next thing is um, work out unusable land. So of your farm, not all area is is e equal and usable. So this uh, four hectares over on the left here, this could be um, something that's really steep, really rocky, bush, there could be a river running through it, a creek, who knows, but um, so work it out. So I'm just going to put an example here where you've got um, a big dam there, you've got some houses and buildings, so we've taken out a bit of the area that's not suitable to use. So now we're left with 10 hectares. And you'll see where, where this goes into sort of, it is very relevant to your fencing. So each square is 100 metres by 100 metres, and that represents a hectare. So if you're talking acres, that's, um, yeah, just put it back in perspective of how big a hectare is. So now we're going to pretend we're going to cut up those squares with 50 by 50 metre. Um, so there they all are. We've got 40 squares there. So these 50 by 50 metre squares, they represent... Well, they can represent um, chicken fences. You get one chicken fence, it's 50 metres long. And it'll make more sense as we move forward. So for the, for the example here, we've got one chicken caravan, 450, in um, one of the squares. Now, if we uh, leave it in there for two days, two days per square times 40 squares, 80 days. So that we, we've just worked out your rotation it's going to be different for every farm. This is not a formula that works on every farm. You might have grass knee high every six weeks because you're just in an absolute growth region. Summer might be your growth time or winter might be your growth time, whatever. But you need to work out um, how many moves you've got before they're back on that square. Um, to, to be extreme, obviously after seven days it wouldn't be recovered enough ready for them to go back on probably 50 to 120 days, probably more like 80 to 120 days before they're back on that same spot. So in this example, we're talking about 80 days and they're actually on a square today. So you're talking about 78 days until they're back on that on that square. So 10 acres, 10 hectares in this example equals a 78 day rest time. So that's just a really quick example of working out your land area. Let's get straight into moving fences. So when I talk about fences, this is a 1.2 meter tall electrified fence, chicken fence. So all the horizontals, the wires are electrified. Um, all the ones going left to right, all the um, vertical ones up and down, they're not. They're just um, not live wires. They're just um, plastic strands that hold all the wires in place. So there's a bit of a top view of one sort of set up and we've sort of mown a strip and that's one thing I would recommend. Where are you going to set it up if it's long grass? Mow a strip so, you can, um, so you're can so you not getting get a lot of um, grass on your wire to short out. So that's me rolling the fence out, just laying it on the ground. And that's just a shot of me kneeling next to the fence. So if you've never seen this fence... 
um, I, I just wanted to have a picture there with a, with a human. So you go, oh, okay, that's sort of what it looks like. The squares are smaller down the bottom. Then they go to rectangles and the rectangles get bigger as they go up. So from the ground to the very top, it's 1.2 meters tall. Let's talk about moving fences. So we've got four fences here. Um, they're all 50 meters long. So that creates a square. And this will make sense now why we, you saw the squares um, when we're working at the land area. So chicken caravan 450, 450 happy hens in there. So the way you move them for cell grazing is you add three fences to the mix. So you have seven fences in total. So you turn up with your ute, you drive into that first um, square, you close the fence behind you. So you now got two squares. One's full of chickens in your caravan, your other square's got you and the ute. You drive, open up that centre and drive through. Now as soon as you open up that centre, the, those hens, they'll start running on through because they want to get the green grass, the, the bugs and everything. Hook up your ute to the caravan, drag it through, you'll find the chickens will all follow. Disconnect, drive out, close up that fence. That's why I do it on a webinar, it's easy to explain. Uh, just yesterday I tried to explain this over the phone, but with pictures it's just so much easier. Drive out, pick up these three fences, put them over here and repeat the process. So that's how you sell graze with um, your chickens and your caravan. The mistake which myself and many others did when um, first started is you get four fences, you're like, okay, they're in that enclosure. And then you come to, okay, we've got to move into a new spot. What do we do now? And you're like, oh, well, maybe I sort of pull the ends of three of them in together and grab one and it, it's just a headache. Just go get seven. Um, I, I want to talk about moving fences for 130. So I prefer setting them up in squares like I just showed you. But another thing you can do, it's more suitable for 130 hens, is um, set it up in a half circle. Um, and obviously you get two of them, so it creates a full circle. Chicken caravan 130 in there, your 130 hens. And we're going to repeat the process, add two more fences. And um, where they meet, you sort of, um, you, you have the openings near each other. Again, drive in, open up that center fence, hook up the caravan, close it up, take the down those two fences and move them. So when that actually comes to cell grazing for 130 hens, like we saw in that first example, um, you're not going to sell graze them in a perfect square formation, but if this is your farm, you'll have like day, day one, day two, or, or over a couple of days each time you move them and um, move them forward. So you will have areas of lands in the, in, in the corner of, of those squares where are not getting fertilized. Probably doesn't matter heaps, um, but if you want um, everything, if you like everything done precisely and in squares, um, just set them up in squares. And you could do like a 25 um, meter by like 50 meter fence. Um, so there's different configurations you can do there. So the next thing I'm going to talk about is um, permanent fencing. Uh, just disregard that number seven because, as I said, th this came from a, um, a, a another presentation I did, and I've just sort of pulled out um, just different things. So permanent fencing. Th this is not something I sort of recommend, but I'll sort of go, go through. Um, I will give credit. Um, the, the photos and stories are from backyardchickens.com. So this is not um, my photos or not my farm. Um, I, the thing with permanent fencing is uh, I think to set it up right so it actually keeps things out, it's very expensive. So uh, fence for run is welded wire. So we're talking about weld mesh here, six foot tall, set in concrete, uh, sorry, cement. It is electrified with four courses of hot wire all around, including the gate itself. Now, I look at this and I think this will keep a fox out because it's got the uh, electrified, they can't dig underneath, it's set, set in cement. Um, yeah, so if you're going to do permanent fencing that is going to be effective, this will be good. Now, we're like looking at that picture, we're probably talking about, I don't know, 12 to 15 hens or something. So we're not talking about big numbers. It's in a relatively small area and they've eaten that out. So that's your downside with, with permanent fencing. 
So permanent fencing pros, if it's set up right, a fox will not be able to get in. Um, and looking at this one, I don't think a fox will be able to get in that one. Um, the cons cost a lot of money to set up right, cost a lot of money to maintain it so it continues to work. So one of the one of the things, like it's easy to build a really good fence um, that's permanent, but the, your downside to it is when trees grow up and, and shrubs grow up and grass grows up and things grow up through it, then you've got to maintain it. So there's a lot of work um, in time and also money to maintain it. So, um, but yeah, I thought I'd cover permanent fencing as well. So summary, um, cost to do it, it's very expensive. Um, and when you look at the cost of maintaining it, I don't think it's viable. Um, if you need to put up a, a permanent fence to keep the Marema dog in, um, then it might be an option. Um, in that scenario, I'd probably just put up some dog fence. So it's not chicken wire, it's just fence that'll keep a dog in. And then in, like you might fence off a, an entire paddock and then inside that paddock, I'd still use your electric fencing um, your, your portable electric fencing. So I hope this has been useful for you to work out your land area, work out how to use the, the fencing and, um, yeah, hope you've enjoyed it. So that's the end. Thank you.